Hello, Parsboro Community Radio listeners. Welcome to Exploring the Neighborhood with your hosts, Thor and Debbie, here on CICR 99.1 on your FM dial. We'd like to thank Kanza as the sponsor for our show. For those of you who are not aware, Kanza is Cumberland County's only Careers Nova Scotia Center and a vital participant in this area's road to prosperity. This year, Kanza is celebrating 15 years of serving the area and providing valuable employment and educational opportunities. Our goal for Exploring the Neighborhood is to take you on a series of half-hour adventures that include road trips, candid interviews, and commentaries. We'll focus on the area's homegrown businesses, unique landmarks, and emerging talent. We're hoping to shine a well-deserved light on the local endeavors that promote eco-friendliness and self-sufficiency. On today's episode, we're taking a trip to the shore and finding out more about a relatively new initiative, Parsboro Creative. I had the chance to visit the spacious luxury of the Gillespie Inn, a historical bed and breakfast in the heart of Parsboro, and I got to speak with the owner of the inn and vice chair of the Parsboro Creative, Mr. David Beatty. This is Thor here once again with Exploring the Neighborhood, and I am sitting here with Mr. David Beatty, a gentleman who is co-owner of the Gillespie House, along with his wife, Lori Lynch, and he is also co-owner of the Black Rock Bistro, and that is a restaurant that I am just waiting for it to open to be able to try out the wonderful menu that I've been told about. And the Black Bistro gets a lot of its ingredients from our friends Brian and Shannon, who own Broad Fork Farm up in River Hebert. David is also involved with something called Parsboro Creative. And I would like David to maybe start with what is Parsboro Creative? Well, thank you, Thor. I'd be glad to talk a little bit about Parsboro Creative. Parsboro Creative is a citizen, volunteer-driven organization that was formed about three and a half years ago with a group of us that really wanted to build upon the cultural experience of Parsboro and looking at it in the ways that culture can contribute to the local economy. So the fundamental purpose of Parsboro Creative is to attract artists of any description, people involved with culture, to actually choose Parsboro as a place to live and work, to hopefully open galleries, open studios, and to make Parsboro a visible, vibrant artist community. So that's one of the things that we've been working towards. Then, just as we got started with the interview, the nuisance of technology interrupted. Don't tell me. You forgot to turn your phone off. I did. Let's just continue. Parsbo Creative is a community-based volunteer organization that was formed about three and a half years ago with the mandate trying to attract artists of any description or all descriptions to feel welcome and want to move and relocate to Parsbro, set up galleries, set up studios, open up their shops practice their trade but the whole purpose of Parsboro Creative really is to build the cultural economy of Parsboro and to also help us stem the outflow of population because we know that we need to have people in town to maintain our grocery store our banks our, our basic services in town and to keep the town as a as a vital vibrant community and we see culture and the arts as being a great way to do that is it exclusive to Parsboro a lot of my friends live various places in Cumberland County. Can we get involved, or is this a really Parsboro situation? Really, we've kind of set our geographic mandate is really what we call the Parsboro Shore, which is essentially five islands or economy over to Advocate Harbor. But our real focus is trying to bring people into the sort of Parsboro and immediate environs because we really think that 
In order to get the critical mass of artists, you need to have a core and a center. That doesn't mean that people that are living outside that area can't participate in some way, but the focus of Parsboro Creative really is in this community, in this general area. What I've noticed is that Parsboro in general seems to be a very artistic community. Population-wise, it seems to have a high concentration of artists. Well, I think that's true. Uh, Parsboro in itself, just geographically, is considered a high-energy area with the way the tides and the coastline is with the cliffs. It's got a natural energy from the environment, and it's also been the home of Ship's Company Theatre now for over 30 years. The Parsboro Citizens Band is one of the longest-standing bands in Canada. The group have now taken that forward and redeveloped the hall as a concert venue and community centre. And then there's a number of artists in the area as well, so it does have an existing strong cultural background and ongoing. You have a core of artists right now from Parsboro. Are you looking to add to it or are you looking to promote them? Both, actually. We'd love to have more artists living and working in Parsboro because there's such a great synergy among artists and they can work together and collaborate on works. So, yes, we're really trying to encourage more to come, but we also want to help the artists that are here to expand and increase their business so they can have a good livelihood. How are you going about attracting more artists? Well, we have a two-pronged effort. One is what we're calling the cultural campus, and the cultural campus is basically it's a bringing together a number of the cultural organizations and artists in the community to put on courses, workshops, seminars, and then... Parsboro Creative will actually work at promoting those through social media, our website, advertising campaigns, and helping organize and helping with the logistics of getting events and courses and workshops off the ground. So that's step number one. And the idea of that is to try to attract people from outside of our area. Well, of course, also people within the area, but to bring people from away to come and experience Parsboro for two, three, four days. So they get a chance to see what a beautiful place it is, and with the idea of hoping to entice them to want to spend more time here. And then the second part of it is an artist attraction program where we're working, and this is still in its infancy, but trying to put together an incentive package that would help people make that decision to say, yes, I want to come and work and live in Parsboro. It is a beautiful place. Absolutely. That's why my wife and I are here because uh, we were looking for something new to do. And about 20 years ago, we came through Parsboro when we found this property and just fell in love with the community. It was a place that uh, we considered. Certainly, if you look at any of the larger centers, even as close by as Moncton or Truro or Halifax, real estate here is extremely affordable. Cumberland County in general is more than affordable. Absolutely. What type of people are you hoping to bring in Is this a general pop by the town and visit the shops, or do you have a particular schedule for events all summer long? Well, there is a calendar of events that's just being compiled now. It's taking shape quite quickly and will be available very soon. And there's a number of musical events, some artistic events with visual arts. And visual arts tends to be a bit of our focus right now because it's the kind of thing that people can actually see So for visitors and tourists coming through, visual arts is something that's there that they can see and appreciate immediately where some other forms of art, such as writing, for example, people can't really experience the production of it. They can experience the end product, but they can't really see it and appreciate it and watch this writer write a book. So I think visual art is certainly a bit of our focus, but the cultural campus, there'll be some drawing, painting. There's some historical societies involved as well, so they're going to have a genealogy course and there will be some things at the age of sale museum about boat building and ironworks these are all things that are just in the development stage right now some of them will happen some of them won't there's also maybe an opera workshop sound and light technology workshop things of that nature maybe even some dance so it's a wide range of arts and culture that we're working on plus of course ships company theater has their annual program that'll be up and running they'll be running all summer long and the hall will be having events through the spring and fall. I'm assuming that places like the Parsboro Fossil Museum are also attached to that? Yeah, the Fundy Geological Museum is certainly a participant in our uh, cultural campus and in the bigger picture of uh, Parsboro Creative. So Tim Fedak, who's the executive director there, curator his proper title, he's very much involved with us in helping organize cultural campus events and working on the calendar for the summer season. 
So it's basically a come enjoy Parsboro and surrounding area. It includes five islands and Avocate Harbor. Absolutely. And we're really pleased with the number of people that have agreed or decided to participate and support our initiatives. I might just say, I didn't mention it at the start, but really the idea for Parsboro Creative came from a fellow by the name of Michael Fuller. Um, Michael, many people will know of from, from this area, was the founder of Ship's Company Theatre 30 some years ago. And after he finished his role there, he moved on and actually was an instigator in bringing the Parsboro Band Hall back to life. Now this is his sort of third major initiative with Parsboro Creative. So he's been a very creative person in our community and uh, somebody with a lot of forward thinking ideas. So I'm very pleased to be working with him. He's the chair of the organization. I'm the vice chair, and we have a strong group of people working with us. Do you work with the Nova Scotia tourist industry? We haven't been in a big way as yet through Parsboro Creative. We've been working, though, quite closely with Nova Scotia Communities, Culture, and Heritage Department. That's really kind of the niche where Parsboro Creative fits in because that's with the cultural development. And tourism is something that we are beginning to explore more of, but first we needed to get some programs up and ready to go before we can then promote them through the tourism organization. And is there any involvement with Cumberland County in general, or is this very much a local initiative? Well, both Cumberland County and the town of Parsboro have been supporters, uh, both financially, just sort of inspirationally. I mean, they're involved. They certainly invite us to come make presentations. They support our events. And so both the the town and the county have been very supportive. Okay, great. I invite you all to check out their website and check out their schedule. The website's very simple. It's just www.parsboroughcreative.com. It's a .com, not a .ca. It's a .com. Okay. And they will give you a basic intro to their artists and the schedule should be on there once it's established. The cultural campus schedule will be on the website. There's information on a number of the artists in the area that are profiled on the website. Our board members are also profiled on the website, so it's easy to get in touch with any of us if there's any questions or interest to uh, become involved. I encourage everyone in the Cumberland, Westmoreland area to come on down and visit Parsboro this summer. It never fails to please. One thing I'd like to add before we go on, Parsboro Creative recently announced the appointment of their new executive director, Mr. Robert Moore. I'm curious what Robert has in mind for the community of Parsboro Shore. Only time will tell. David, you're also, you and I believe Lori as well are on the Board of Trade. We are, yes. I'm the current president, have been now for the last four years, and Lori is vice president, so it's a family affair right at the moment. Oh, isn't that cheating? (laughs) We'd be very open to somebody else volunteering to relieve one or both of us of our positions because uh, we've been at it for a while, though we do enjoy doing it, I have to say. Oh, watch out if I move to Parsboro. (laughs) You'll be most welcome. All right, and what does the Board of Trade do? The purpose of the Board of Trade is to promote local businesses and try to help businesses succeed. So some of the things that we do to promote local business is meeting with government officials, with the municipality and the province, and just talking about issues in the town, talking about things like business taxes. We hold a number of events in the town through the year. We put on the old-fashioned Saturday night, which is a street party in July. We put on the Prospector Street Party, which is another street party during the Gem and Mineral Show in August. We host the Christmas tree lighting and assist with the Christmas market weekend in November. We host the Santa Claus Parade in December. And we put on the Citizen of the Year dinner each year, which this year will be in May. That sounds like a lot. It's a fair number of events. Plus, you know, we're always trying to support new initiatives and new ideas. So in the past year, we brought together a number of the interested stakeholder groups with the fundy title power and brought the town, the county, the Harbor Commission, the Force Community Liaison Group, the Cumberland Energy Authority and the Board of Trade and got everybody to sit down at a table and just start talking about the common interests, what are the things that need to be done to prepare the town for the business opportunities that are going to come from this, and just to have a bit of a forum so that people are informed of what's going on. So we meet not on a regular basis, but every three or four months, we just get the group together to sit down and see what the new developments are and where we should be going with that. 
we've done some work with other people in the community to explore the possibilities of you know trying to get a, something like a nursing home built in Parsboro. And we're always looking for other opportunities. We're now working with the Chambers of Commerce from Amherst and Spring Hill and Oxford and Pugwash to try to get all of the Cumberland County Chambers and Boards of Trades working cooperatively so that we can bring more benefits to our members. That's a great idea. Well, I can't take full credit for that one. I got to say that one originated with the folks in Amherst, but everybody's bought into it very quickly because we see the power and the strength of working together. I like that. I'm a big promoter of building up your local economy and doing it by promoting unique and diverse opportunity. So what have you and I been up to this week? There was our weekly fix up the farm day in River Hebert. Oh, and the seed swap in Amherst, where we reconnected with our friends at Wismical and Broad Fork Farms. We highly recommend trying their organic, locally produced vegetables. Speaking of locally produced, we did get our supply of grass-fed beef this week from Frank of Linden Lee Farms. We also took a trip up to Pugwash to walk the Oceanside Park and browse the unique vintage wares at Monty's Shop. Always busy running around the country exploring, recording, filming, and looking for hidden treasures. You do enjoy your thrift shops, don't you? Well, of course I do. So you sound like a very busy man. You operate two businesses. You're on the board of trade. You got your hands in just about everything. Parsboro Creative. Where do you get the time to vacation? Ah, well, that's one of the benefits of having a seasonal business. We do get to close the business down for a period of time each year. It gives us a bit of time to travel and also gives us a bit of time to do the maintenance on the properties that need to be done because both of our businesses have property. So we just love to go during the winter months of Parsboro. We escape somewhere where we can follow our passion, which is hiking. We travel often and have traveled far and wide for fun and filming adventures since we met. However, our excursions pale in comparison to the exotic exploits of Laurie and David. Tell me, so you leave the winter in Parsboro and you go to Antarctica. Well, doesn't that seem like a natural thing to you? (laughs) Not my first choice. Tell me why you would do that. I think we went to Antarctica because it's such an interesting, fascinating place like nowhere else we've ever been and we were interested to go because we wanted an opportunity to experience that okay tell us because we probably have a lot of flat earth believers out there is it the edge of the world well i'm not sure if it is but maybe we could have seen it from there i don't know but i tell you it was an interesting place we were 12 days on the boat we flew or traveled out of ushuaia argentina across the drake channel and then went down along the western side of the Antarctic Peninsula and actually went south of the Antarctic Circle. I had a little excitement down there actually because our ship managed to find a rock to hit and punctured (laughs) a hole in the hull. So we ended up being transferred to another vessel for the return voyage. It's a a one-of-a-kind place for sure. Did you find hollow earth? No. No, okay. No, we didn't. (laughs) They claim that the entrance to hollow earth is there. Then you went to warmer places, Rwanda? We went to Rwanda because we wanted to go up into the Virunga Mountains and see the mountain gorillas. That was the draw to Rwanda. Uh, Again, another fascinating experience. These gorillas live in families of 12 to 15 or 16 in a family. And they're not afraid of people. They roam through. It's a park, a national park that you're allowed to go in. It's very controlled. They allow only groups of eight people at a time, and that group will have only one hour per day with that family of gorillas. So again, it's an expensive thing. It's one of those sort of of one-in-a-lifetime opportunities that you have to be prepared to pay to play. But it's, it's just fascinating. I was as close as from you to me to a large gorilla. I mean, a little frightened, I gotta say, but... (laughs) Don't drop the soap. (laughs) All right, and I see Morocco as well. Again, it's a place that's warm in our winter. We did hiking in the Atlas Mountains. That was the main focus of our trip. So we did a seven-day 
track with a local guide and a mule. We had the mule, of course, to carry all the heavy things, which was nice. We stayed in some Berber houses, which were really very rudimentary homes with a mat on the floor to sleep on and a single light bulb hanging from the ceiling, if you were lucky. We slept in a mountain lodge, a rock, just a stone building built by a French alpine club that had no heat and the puddles froze overnight. And then we got to climb Mount Tubkal, which is a little mountain over 14,000 feet in the high Atlas Mountains. So that was an interesting time. And then we spent a week along the coast, actually. My wife enjoys yoga. So we did a yoga travel week with a group there, and we went out on the Moroccan coast along the Atlantic Ocean, spent a week, and then traveled down to the desert. So I assume that yoga sign that I saw as I parked, that has some relation to your wife. Well, it does, yeah. Through the summer, we have yoga classes here every week, once a week, and she's going to try to expand that a little bit more, I think, this year. So she's just kind of growing the interest in Parsboro for people to come and do yoga with her. Because you two are just not busy enough, are you? Well, that's a time for her to just chill out a little. <laughs> okay. Then I've got Argentina, Peru as well. Is that hiking? Hiking again, yeah. It's pretty much all of our trips involve hiking. So in Peru, we hiked the Inca Trail, four-day trek into Machu Picchu. And we also hiked into another Inca ruins, which was another four-day trek, which was really even more fascinating because it wasn't a national park. There wasn't a throng of tourists. There was us and two other tourists on the whole four days. Wow. That sounds like the Bay of Fundy. My wife and I went there, and the provincial park looked as far as the eye can see, and we were the only two people there. Exactly. It's incredible when you're in a place as beautiful as the world can deliver and you're alone also nepal i'm assuming hiking as well hiking again yes we're in nepal and bhutan different trips again we did a lot of trekking while we were there and the nice thing about trekking in both of those countries is that the places that you're walking you're walking along paths that the local people actually use as their means of transportation. So as you're walking, you'll see a mule train go by with all their supplies, or there's still, when we were there, at least people carrying goods up the mountains on their backs because they didn't have other means. There's no roads to a lot of the communities where they're high up in the mountains. Interesting to see how they farm. Everything is grown on terraces. Everything's done by hand because the terraces are so small, there's no room for tractors. The sad part is that there's a huge cultural change as more and more mechanization comes in and less and less of the manual labor is affordable or sustainable. And I don't know what's going to happen in some of those countries, but what a huge difference between Nepal and Bhutan. Nepal has something like 20 million people in a very small country. It's very crowded. There's some big cities where Bhutan is about a million people, maybe a million and a half, and about a similar sized country but very much controlled. They're very much more concerned about their environment. You can't cut trees without permission from the government to cut the trees. Can't get fish without a license. So two countries close together, very, very different. I've hiked at 10,000, 12,000 feet, which is not very high. And I walked about three steps before I was completely out of breath. So I'm assuming that you're basically just at the tail end of your 20s while you're doing all these walking and hiking through the mountains? Wishful thinking. (laughs) How do you do it? That's a good question because really I don't have time or don't take the time to do much conditioning before. I guess maybe I've always had an active life when I was younger and your body kind of remembers and you learn how to pace yourself. Uh, The first day we don't take off like rabbits and try to lead the pack or anything. We just plod along and we tell people, you know, it might not be pretty, but we're going to get there. (laughs) Anyone who has not experienced trying to just breathe above 10,000 feet can't even imagine what it would be like in Nepal or in Peru. That takes a lot to be hiking up there. When we were in Peru, it was a good example because we flew directly from the coast in Lima up to Cusco, which is about 10,000 feet had to walk up one floor in the hotel with our suitcases, and I was out of puff. (laughs) But after three or four days, you acclimatize, and it gets better. When I get to 10,000 feet, I don't stick around for days. (laughs) Parsboro Dollars for Seniors, do you know anything about that? It's a program that 
David Howe and I think Frank Barter started through the Lions Club. And I'm not that familiar with it. I haven't been participating in it. I, I think it's a great thing for helping some people that are having some financial difficulties. I'm not really sure how it's working. We've been away lately and I haven't been updated on what's happening with that, so I can't really speak to it. Okay. How would someone get a hold of you if they have talents to share? Well, one of the easiest ways, of course, is just by using the contact information on our website because that will give you an email to our executive and then people can close that loop very quickly. That's probably the most direct way. I mean, people are always welcome to call me here at the Inn or at the Bistro or to call Michael Fuller. But using the website and the contact information there is certainly the simplest and surest way. All right. Anyone who has talents, I guess? We're always interested in speaking with people and seeing where they might fit within our organization or within the other cultural opportunities that are here in Parsboro. And it's all about making connections, you know, and getting people to feel involved. Anybody that wants to get involved, certainly we'd love to hear from them. And there's lots of opportunities in Parsboro. You hear that, listeners? Don't be shy. If you've got talent, if you've got interest, this is opportunity. Take it. All you got to do is call or email. One of the things I wanted to mention, Dor, is that uh, we're working on a new festival for Parsboro area, and it's called 10 Days in October. And the plan would be to have a 10-day festival at the beginning of October, and it would encompass a wide range of activities from an October fest to art exhibits throughout the community to events at Ship's Company Theatres, events at the Geofundy Geological Museum. We were looking at the beautiful foliage in the fall here in the Parsboro area and particularly the blueberry fields that are nice scarlet red come fall. It's a new festival. We're literally looking forward to promoting it and seeing how we can make this fit within the framework of events in the Parsboro area, but it's a time of year when nothing particular had been scheduled in any festival kind of way in this area. And Debbie and I, we will be here. Super. Okay, time has run out. If you'd like to contact us, our email is scotiaheritageproductions at gmail.com. When it comes to local business, arts, crafts, and entertainment, we'll try our best to provide a global perspective on our community and remind listeners that where one regularly chooses to spend their money is often much more powerful than the occasional vote at the ballot box. So, help out your talented neighbors and enjoy the unique diversity of what Cumberland, Westmoreland, has to offer. And ultimately, you'll be helping yourself. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. So, tune in next week for another episode of Exploring the Neighborhood with your hosts, Thor and Debbie, here on CICR 99.1 on your FM dial.